Radio Australia with Phil Kapkaloudis. On our weekday mornings from 7.30 in Port Moresby, 5.30 in Hong Kong. RadioAustralia.net.au A few years ago, plastic was a saviour of everything. It was used to replace expensive metals on cars. It saved sand being mined for glass. Even calfskins on drumheads have been almost completely replaced by plastic. But by becoming so dominant, plastic has caused huge problems. The oceans around the world have huge amounts of plastic in them. And that will probably never break down. Only a couple of years ago in Queensland, I saw a sign on a boat... Um, and it showed a photo of a 100-year-old turtle that was seen acting oddly. It died, and when they cut it open, its stomach was full of plastics of all kinds that it had just ingested by swimming around what should be pristine waters. Obviously, something's got to be done about plastic, and Gina Prendergast is doing something. She is trying to live for all of this year, for all of 2011, without plastic, and she joins us now in the studio. Gina, thanks very much for joining us. Good morning. It must be hard. How's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well. Um, I'm finding there are alternatives to most things that I need, um, so plastic-free alternatives. Um, like any challenge that anyone sets himself, um, whether it's you know running a half marathon or deciding to lose a bit of weight after Christmas or Easter, um, when you set yourself a goal and you start to achieve it, it's really satisfying, and that's how I'm feeling. Do you shop in supermarkets? Not often. Um, mm. I prefer to shop at food markets, local farmer markets. Um, however, through the interest that's being generated through a plastic-free year, um, the year, the challenge that I'm going through. I'm actually shopping at supermarkets more than I used to because I'm trying to find solutions for people that um, do shop at supermarkets and that's their only option. Okay. So have you been able to or did you ever expect you'd be able to live without plastic? Well, um, I guess the definitions or my guidelines around living a plastic-free year is really focusing on virgin plastic, so new virgin plastic, living without that. So you can use old plastic bags? I can, yeah. 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 So uh, when I do go shopping, in a supermarket, I always take my own bags, like colour code bags or reusable bags. Um, and it's really simple things that um, everyone can do, such as when you get your vegetables and your fruit, don't put those in individual plastic bags as well. Just pop them straight into your basket or your trolley. Um, usually the checkout staff don't mind at all. And you can save a lot of plastic that way. Yeah. yeah. All right. What is the piece of plastic that you found hardest not to, uh, to, to use? The piece of plastic that's hardest not to use, the one thing that I haven't been able to get around at all this year is um, I'm a healthy person. I'm, I'm lucky that I can say I'm a healthy person, haven't been reliant on the medical system in my 30-something years, but I am pregnant, so I'm six and a half months pregnant at the moment, so I do have a reliance on the medical system to a point at the moment. Um, and getting routine blood tests, of course the blood goes into plastic vials um, for hygienic reasons and I'm glad that it does. Um, not glass? It's not funny. glass, yeah, no, yeah. it's a, a, um, a type of perspex um, plastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they use plastic and also the syringe that holds the needle is plastic. Um, so that's the one thing I haven't been able to get around at all. Um, they used to have ivory syringes, didn't they? But that's, that's a whole different I thing, isn't know, it? But really? you wouldn't want to be using that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think animal rights. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. What about credit cards? Does it go as far as you not using credit cards because they're plastic? Well, you know, I still use plastic um, credit cards. I haven't actually had one expire this year. So um, the the other guidelines to my year is, um, so the first one is to obviously not purchase or be gifted any virgin plastic. Mm. The second one is um, if I can't find a plastic-free alternative um, is to use a second-hand um, a plastic item or something that's been made from post-consumer recycled plastic. But thirdly, if I do get virgin plastic, such as a credit card, um, I have to keep that. I can't let it go into the waste stream at all. So any plastic I accumulate becomes my own waste that I hold in my own home. And at the end of the year, I'll be weighing that to understand what my plastic footprint is. Hopefully I can do something with it, like make an art sculpture or something like that, you know, prevent it from going into waste. Mm. Um, But that's the idea of the year. You probably would have seen, like I have too, the first time I went to Asia many years ago, and whole empty lots in major cities that were just full all of different coloured plastic where bags had just been thrown, mm. you know, and this was, you know, 20 odd years ago. And you just wonder how bad it must be now in some places. Well, I think it is bad. I mean, just recently I went to Indonesia in January for two weeks um, and I was wondering how was I going to go living plastic free uh, in Indonesia. Um, 
I was quite surprised that I could go most places and fill up my own stainless steel water bottle with drinkable water. It was only when I was going through um, central Java that um, I did actually have to purchase two plastic Uh, bottles with water uh, because I couldn't fill up my own bottle safely but getting this was this year that you were doing the traveling so flying on planes with plastic cups and all of that stuff that they did yeah so I had no meals or no drinks on the planes really that's right yeah Um, so I was quite dehydrated at the end of the flight but luckily the airports there was drinkable water that I could fill up my stainless steel bottle with Gee, you weren't pregnant then. I was. <laughs> no. Yeah, so I uh, went that extra mile anyway to try and live plastic-free wow. there. And um, obviously it's not ideal, um, but, yeah. That's I, going the extra mile, all right, yeah. That's, that's, that's right. It's huge. What do you know about these currents? Because this is what's causing the problems, that there are certain currents that are going around the oceans there that are bringing plastic around and around again and they're interacting? Mm. That's right. Well, there's such a there's about five gyres in the world, um, and gyres, what they call, yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, the so any waste that it, it can be waste that we discard, um, you know, just drop on the ground. It can go into the waterways, out into the oceans. It can also be that you know maybe we do put our plastic in recycling bins, and as it's been emptied into trucks, it's just get blown blown yeah. into the oceans. When I was in Indonesia, travelling from a ferry ferry from Java to um, Bali, uh, I saw on the ship that I was on. They just chucked out all the rubbish from the ship over the top into the ocean. No. So there's many ways that rubbish gets into the ocean. um, And the way that the currents work is they sort of start to swirl and all the rubbish starts to accumulate in central um, points where the currents bring the rubbish together. The North Pacific Gyre, um, it does fluctuate in size, but it can get up to two times the size of Texas, which is huge. And in some parts... Where is that, the North Pacific Gyre? um, Roughly located uh, between the Californian coast and Japan, if you think about it there. There's also one... Twice the size of Texas, which is a big enough state to accommodate the entire human population. That's right. That's extraordinary. Yeah, it's huge. Um, There's also another one in the South Pacific, uh, just off the Chilean coast. Um, So that's two of the five gyres around the world. Um, And some of these gyres, I mean, scientists are still doing a lot of research in these areas, but plankton, uh, which is the most abundant source of food for marine life, plastic outweighs it by six times. Mm. So if you're a marine animal, you're more likely to eat plastic than plankton. Um, And that's how it gets into our food chains. It gets into the marine life um, causes them suffering but also it causes us suffering in the long term because we don't know all the consequences um, of consuming these fish now that do eat plastic well what it means on our own health yeah what do you do with the plastic ideally i think we would all love to see all plastic taken out of the ocean these gyres are huge what can be done with them? They, they're not recyclable, are they? Uh, in general, they're not. Well, th- some of them can be recycled. Um, or made into other things. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Well, as we've seen here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, there's a walkway which they've, they've now made that into a... Pl- they've made a, a plastic um, recycled product uh, treadway for it so you don't slip as you're walking over to it. So you can oh. make product out of it. That's right. But... That's really the only thing you can do, isn't it? Because it's not a matter of just taking it out of the ocean and dumping it in a dump somewhere, is it? No. I mean, there's, there's other problems as well about having it on land. You know, the toxins can leach into the soils and so forth. So the idea really, though, is to actually get it out of the oceans and make some other products with it. I mean, we all agree that plastic is very convenient. But if we're making single-use and disposable plastics... Do we need, need those plastics in the first place? So do we need you know, your water mm. bottles? Do we need to have one every single day? Yeah. Do we need to use all those shopping bags? Well, Is that's what we were told when we went, shop, we went uh, to the Middle East, went to uh, Egypt, and we were told you've got to have two big plastic bottles of water every day just to keep you going, you know. And that's just what people are being told by mm. quite environmental companies, saying, right. you, you know, just take this water, you know. So you've got to change a lot of messages, don't you? You do, and I think you know it's the same with a lot of different products in the world. Um, we, I, I do believe that you know as a society we've started to lose our own intuition about how to live a good lifestyle. We do start following what the marketing mm. is telling us, mm. um, and it has marketing got their own invested interests most of the time. Not all the time, but as a generalisation, yeah, they've got their own product to sell, their own money to make, and sometimes it is to the detriment of our own health and our planet as well. Radio Australia.